Hi, my name is Nolan Lampkin. I'm a Moto America Stock 1000 and Superbike Cup racer. This past season, I raced in the Stock 1000 and Superbike Cup classes. I won the Superbike Cup championship and then finished in fifth place in the Stock 1000 class out of 64 different riders. And one of the things that I always really like doing is I like reading other people's posts when they go through what's going on in a weekend. I like knowing what's going on in a weekend. I think it's really cool. And there's a lot of things where people post race content and it's P5, P1, P3. And they just give the position. They don't really give the backstory behind some of the other stuff that goes into a weekend. And for me, I've been figuring out some different ways on how to go about this. But there's some different things that I'd like to be able to talk about and explain and show some of the behind the scenes stuff from this past race season. The main thing that I've been wanting to go over is kind of the second half of our season from Brainerd, Minnesota to the end of the year. And I'd written different Instagram captions and comments and things like that. But um, I never was really able to find a way that I liked explaining it. Also, the post would be about a mile long and I wasn't able to cover all of the different things. So for me, what I'm going to do today is go over the first race kind of in that series. This is Stock 1000 Race 2 at Brainerd. And then after that, be able to kind of dive into some of the other stuff. For me, this past season, racing on my Tomwood Power Sports BMW, there was a lot of things that happened and went on behind the scenes. And I like being able to share that stuff, like I said before, and being able to go through this race in particular. The race is going to be playing kind of at the same time. We'll talk for about the first lap. Um, and show some of the different stuff and then I'll go into some of the different things that happened during this weekend and then after that then the race really uh, hots up as the Brits would say and then we'll talk more about this race in particular okay so as the race is starting right now we're pulling up to the starting line and the start for Brainerd's quite interesting and turn one normally is a fifth gear almost wide open turn um you come out of the last turn in second go up bang 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 and then you just turn the first into the first turn and with this the start it's extra interesting because you don't even have to really roll out you just go straight into it and one of the things that'll be uh, important to note later if you look at Ezra Bobier just now I could I was looking to him on my left side and I could just see and hear him screaming in his helmet so i knew that he was going to be really amped up and i'm on the inside of the track which is kind of dirty and then not really able to carry a ton of the speed into the first turn just because with some of the stuff that happened in qualifying which i'll get into here in a minute we weren't able to really capitalize on our grid position so i was starting on the third row way back in the middle of nowhere um and we end up finishing this race in fourth, but the beginning of the race is certainly interesting to say the least. So here we are for the start of the race, lights on. And if you notice, there was a little bit of movement from Ezra in that. And so I saw out of the corner of my eye, I saw him moving. Um, and I knew that he would be getting some type of penalty. Wasn't sure what it was, but in that first turn, I absolutely got stuffed. Um, and just some of the different stuff that happened in turn two was even worse. So at this point in the race, we're two turns into a 12 lap race and I'm all the way back in like 11th place. It was terrible. Um, it was a terrible start and I'm sitting back uh, in 11th place right now, just losing my mind a little bit and figuring out how am I going to have to make it past all of these different people. So if you count back now, I think I made a pass on one of the guys. I think I'm in 10th place. And the first lap was terrible. And at this point, I'm thinking, all right, I've got to start making these moves. I had Cody Wyman up in front of me and trying to figure out how is the best way to just start making forward. Because i got to, I got to pass a whole bunch of people. The expectation for us going into this race was to be on the podium. Like We knew we had that podium pace, but I'm all the way back. So it's going to be a fun race from here on out. So this is coming up to one of the turns in particular. This next right-hander, the kink, if you look, so right now there is Caleb Carroll and then Ezra Bobier followed by Travis Wyman and then Justin Meast. And then right after Justin Meast. So this is back at the, uh, the bus stop here at Brainerd. And then two turns later is the one we're looking at. And I put a pass on a guy here. 
And I'm back, back here where my cursor is. So Travis Wyman, Justin Meese, and then there's two, three other people up in front of me. And it's a super tight kink and no one ever thinks you can pass there. And we were having some issues uh, the day before. And basically where this turn is, right beside it is where the pit lane is. So that's where all my crew, my crew chief, um, mechanic, dad, um, they're all standing there watching the race. So I know that if there's one turn they're paying attention to, it's going to be this one. Um, and I wasn't thinking that in the moment, but uh, it certainly did occur to me later on in the lap. And I passed Cody Wyman here, and we come out of this turn. And because I had so much to do, I had no time to waste. Okay, I have an opportunity here. I'm going to send it right now because I can't keep waiting around. If I wait around, who knows what's going to happen, and there's more space. So up in front of me now is Ryan Burke. And through this first turn, I was really able to carry a lot of speed. And I'm back in eighth place at this point, past a handful of people on that opening lap. We have 11 laps to go here in this race. So where the races are going through right now is coming out of turn two, going into turn three. And for me, I'd be going through turn two, looking out of the top of my helmet, and I'd be seeing the next rider. And this one was Ryan Burke. So on this lap, I believe I did pass Ryan going into turn three. And the beginning of this race was just... We were digging. Our, I was in a bit of a hole, um, but I knew we had the pace, knew we had the speed, so I was going to do everything I could to make our way back. And so now in front of me is Justin Meast. So I'd already passed Ryan Burke and then closed the gap down to uh, Justin Meast ahead of him. So again, we've got good pace. We've got good speed. Know that we can be there. But as I talked about before, going to talk about some of the rest of the weekend leading up to this. It was an interesting time because our first time going to Brainerd, not our first time, but the first time this year going to Brainerd, there were a handful of the other teams that were all able to go and test at Brainerd leading up to this weekend. I raced in the Superbike Cup, which meant that I was racing in all of the Superbike races. Some of the people were only racing in Stock 1000, and only Stock 1000, you only have five rounds. I'm doing nine, which there's a benefit and disadvantage to everything. And these other guys, they were able to spend the budget and they were able to go and test these, this track. There were a couple people in particular who I think did one, two, maybe even three days prior to this race. We didn't have that, so we knew that we were going to have to do the best that we could, um, which obviously we're doing the best that we can anytime, but we're having to start from scratch going into this track. So with that, Friday morning, Friday morning was good. We had an electronic update to our BMW, which was nice because then we were able to get the latest spec electronics I'm on the BMW S1000. And the BMW M1000 is a very, very, very similar bike. The speed's very ki uh, comparable, but like they get some of the updates and stuff a bit ahead of me. So I wasn't able to have this until this weekend. We put it in in the morning, and there was an issue just with the data logging system on it. And it changes some of the way the electronic strategies work with this update. So we didn't have, sorry, we have um, now the updated engine braking. And the way the engine braking strategy worked is entirely different. It was not at all similar to what we had before, where before the engine braking was based off of your RPM going into the corner. And that's pretty much what most electronic systems use. That's what I've used most of the time. Here, uh, I just passed, I'd passed Justin Meast here somewhere on this lap. Um, and I've worked my way up to sixth, being 11th on that first lap. And now I've got Travis Wyman and Ezra Bobia up ahead of me. And they've got about a second gap, 1.2 seconds to me. I've got 1.2 seconds to catch up to them. So we have the different engine braking strategy and we're working that through. There was an issue, a glitch with the electronic, uh, with the electronics. So we weren't able to download the data from the first session. The second session, it was raining, so we were on slick tires, but it was wet, so it was kind of this 50-50. It was a crazy session. Okay, kind of had to write that off, but we at least got something. We go then go into Saturday, and Saturday qualifying, there was a, an issue with the bike. Um, something we had actually changed prior to the weekend to make sure that we would be totally good, but it's just some of those things in racing are kind of hard to... Um, predict ahead of time there's always something that happens in racing and so everybody's got to do the best that they can 
So we then go into Saturday's Stock 1000 Race 1, basically having no information on this bike. So the whole Saturday doing the Stock 1000 Race and the Superbike Race, we're just trying to get the bike in the right window. In the Stock 1000 Race, I was having some issues with the front end feel of the bike. And so my crew chief had pulled me aside and we had talked through some stuff um, because passing for me was super difficult on the Saturday. We changed the forks wholesale uh, for Sunday which this is Sunday and this is the second race in stock 1000 and you can see we've got pretty good speed and I've closed up onto the back of Travis Wyman. The gap a lap ago was 1.2 seconds and right now I'd guess that it's probably three tenths maybe but what they're showing on screen right now is Ezra having his little jump start moment. That's something that I'd seen out of the corner of my eye because he and I had a battle on Saturday which is the day before this race and knew that we had kind of uh, similar speeds. He's a championship leader at this time. And I've closed right on to the back of Travis Wyman. But the day before, um, Ezra and I got into it, almost touched in the last corner. Um, and it was something that I was like, okay, this is just seeing how he rides. Um, going into turn five, I believe it is here. All right, right on Travis, trying to make a pass. Um, just wasn't quite able to make it stick, but showing that I'm there and making sure that um, doing everything I can to, to get by. Because I can see second and third, Benjamin Smith and Caleb DeCarroll up in front of us, but it's not unobtainable. I mean, from where I was the first lap and seeing how far they were out in the distance, meaning Ezra and Travis, I knew that I could try and close that gap. I had good speed. We had good pace in this area. I was really getting kind of bundled up. In these laps, I had pace over the guys in front of me. And Brainerd's a cool track, but being able to get around people is always interesting because at a lot of tracks, you have straightaways. You have really hard braking zones. Here, the first sector is fifth gear, wide open. You're doing 120 miles an hour in turn one. In turn two, you take a back shift to fourth, and you're doing the slowest speed of 110 miles an hour. So you have to get, for me, I had to get really creative on the passing and I'm right on the back of Travis Wyman right now. So, again, I knew I had good pace starting out in 11th, working our way forward. And I got right alongside Travis right then, but I just wasn't able to outbreak him. With some of the different fork changes that we had made, we knew that it was going to be an improvement, but we weren't quite sure where it was at, and we weren't able to necessarily get that time um, on the bike. But right there... Um, just looking for a moment, looking for an opportunity, looking for him to make a mistake and then be able to slide up underneath. Going into this turn six, in that section of track right there where it's all back and forth, had pretty good speed, so I was always looking for different things, being able to try some different stuff in there and try and get around these guys. I run the carousel turn a bit wider on this lap. Again, just trying different things. But all in all, knowing that we've got good speed, got good pace, all right, right behind one of the race winners from Road America, right behind the championship leader. All right, we're in a pretty good spot right now, just looking for ways to, to get around that. And... Yeah. Let me turn this volume up. And uh, they wouldn't necessarily know, obviously, that Bobier is being scored a little bit farther back. back. Hey. Hey. So right now they're talking about how we wouldn't know that Ezra Bobier is getting a little bit um, he's going to be scored further back because of his jump start. Travis might not have known that because Travis was in front of Ezra for the start, but I was right there and I'd seen it. So I knew that Ezra had jumped the start and it was blatant. It wasn't a little flinch. It wasn't something like that. I knew it was a bit of a move. So I uh, knew that there was a jump start. I knew that Ezra knew that there was a jump start just because it's the lights were still red. Uh, the lights hadn't gone out. You knew that that was something to pay attention to. And that's where I was thinking Ezra was ahead of Travis. If I can get ahead of Travis and then show Ezra a wheel, I've got the pace, um, try and get around them and then be able to put a, put a gap into it um, and then try and catch up to Caleb and Ben Smith. The podium was in sight. I could taste the podium. I knew we were right there um, and knew that we would be, be in a good spot. 
And at this point in the race right now, I'm really just trying to look for other ways to get around these people, look at different opportunities. I had done the pass in that kink earlier this race, so I knew it was an opportunity. I knew it was an option in the warm-up for this race on Sunday. In the Sunday warm-up, because the crew is standing right there, like I had mentioned before, looking at that turn, I was able to get right behind Caleb, and I was able to get right behind Ezra. And I was able to run a tighter line going in there and still carry the same speed as those guys exiting those that turn. And the first sector, I was able to really catch up on those people in turn one and turn two, those really fast turns. The BMW M1000s have a bit more horsepower than what my bike did, so... I was on the S versus the M, and the M, I think, has, I don't know the exact number, but I think it's something along the lines of 20 extra horsepower compared to my bike where the cylinder head and some of the pistons and stuff is different, and it's got more power. But I knew uh, that I had good speed in, in that section and that we'd be able to put something together. Up in front here, so uh, this is going to be pretty interesting to see what he can uh, make happen here. Make happen here. Make happen here. Yeah, so these guys, I can see what they're doing as I'm back behind and being able to keep an eye on things. The nice thing with that first sector being so open is I'm able to see different things. And, okay, if I'm going into this turn, keeping track on where those guys are out in front of me. Hayden Gillum had kind of taken off. And one of the things that we learned after the race, because obviously I didn't know as I'm on the bike, but I ran the uh, second fastest sector one time, and I ran the fastest sector two time of the entire race. So... Had good speed, had good pace. Um, if we wouldn't have had some of those issues on Friday and Saturday, be able to be a bit higher, the expectation then could have been um, fighting for the win, not the podium. But this turn right here, four laps to go. I ride around the outside of Travis Wyman. I had tried it the lap before, but they were showing the replay of Ryan Burke crashing. And I rode around the outside of Travis because I knew I had good speed in that turn. And there's nothing you can, you can't really contest the person going around the outside of you, especially in turn one. And I was able to carry so much more speed through that section that it was an opportunity that I had in being able to try some different moves. They're talking about during this race that I'm able to carry so much more corner speed than these other guys, which, yes, it was true, but it wasn't necessarily that I'm riding the thing like a 600. I mean, it's just some of the different styles and different things. And it wasn't this lap, but I think it was the next lap. It was interesting to seeing the ways that we all made speed, made our time around the track. It was all a little bit different. And like Ezra was the apex of these turns. And I show him a wheel right here going into the chicane, trying to go up underneath him, just wasn't able to really get it to work. But he knows that I'm there and knows that I'm fighting him. Uh, and at this point, okay, he has a jump start, has some of this other stuff. There's not really a benefit into getting into this huge battle and possibly having something happen. So um, knew that I had good pace and knew that we could be getting forward now. It's just, all right, next on the list is Ezra uh, for this particular race. And yeah, so that was in turn one again and tried to go around the outside of Ezra there as well. Wasn't able to quite get it to work, but going through turn two, set it up, going into turn three. And I'm actually able to, I'm ahead of Ezra at this point. But when we get to the breaks, he was just able to basically outbreak me into this turn. But all right, now we've got three laps. and The time is closing down. I really got to try and catch up to Caleb and Ben. Okay, going into turn four. It's next turn five. I can feel the rear end starting to slide around, feel it really starting to move. Um, the day before, I was trying a bunch of different things in the TC. Hold on. So right here, as marks it in the apex, and I about run into the backside of him, and I'm hanging off the bike, and he's super slow at the apex, and it's just I was carrying a bit more roll speed, so I had to stand the bike up. And It's interesting seeing the stuff on TV compared to what it felt like on the bike because it felt like we were inches apart, and... I was afraid of Travis coming right back up underneath us, but obviously he didn't. Uh, and now I'm just, again, trying to find a different way to get around Ezra. But as I was saying earlier, I was trying different things with the TC. In this race, the bike was still sliding around, but it was manageable. Um, and the day before, I was 
I tried a whole bunch of different stuff with the TC to get it all aligned because we had that new electronic update. There were just certain things that I was feeling that I didn't um, quite like necessarily. Um, and I was messing around with it a lot. Today we were able to get the stuff dialed in a bit more and I was just feeling more comfortable on the bike. So I think I may have gone to plus one on the TC. That was maybe it. Um, one or two. Because the more that I'm turning the TC up, the more that it's slowing the bike down. And obviously, I don't want that if I'm trying to pass these guys. i got to get around them. i got to have the pace that I've got. And it's a 12-lap race, so tire wear is obviously an important thing, but it's not the most important thing because I'm also racing the superbike races, which are a little bit longer. They have more time on them. And in the superbike races, the tire wear is more of an issue. And also, later in the day, this race is around 12 noon. But the superbike races are at 3 o'clock, so the bike was quite a bit different from this race to the afternoon. Um, but in this, we're trying different things, looking at different stuff. And that's being able to get more time on the bike. We're at lean and mean operation. My crew chief's great. Uh, Dustin Mayer and his dad is my mechanic, Donnie. And those guys are great, and it's cool seeing how much they put into the program. And um, I'm super grateful for those guys them along with Steve Weir on the electronic side. It's been been great and I'm super excited for 2024. I like being able to share more information kind of behind the scenes of what's going on in this race. So this is the last lap. Now it's, I got to get around. I have to get around Ezra. Have to get around Ezra. And they're going to cut off here in a second, but all right. I hadn't tried anything in turn two. So I try and get alongside in turn two. And then I get alongside, and I pass him in turn two, start breaking into turn three, and we'll see it here shortly. Um, because I knew we had good pace, but Caleb, uh, Hayden was able to just get away. But here now, you can see some dirt and stuff fly off back in the distance. And the commentators talk about it, but they don't really know what's going on. And we'll see it here shortly. And Hayden just said, Roger Hayden just now said, that obviously Nolan didn't know about the five-second penalty. Otherwise, why would he be risking that much? But I knew he had the five-second penalty, so I expected, okay, maybe Ezra is still trying to think he has the pace, so he's trying to continue to push, but it's the last lap at this point. Um, uh, so I was hoping to just get around him at that point, being able to close down the gap, because no matter what, he would have a five-second penalty, which would push him out of the position but didn't um there's a race before that i had where i was able to close down it was a two second gap on the last lap of the race and in this race you got to be there for something to happen maybe something does happen between caleb carroll and ben smith and then i'm able to pick up pieces maybe i'm able to close the gap i don't know but i've got to do everything i can to be in that position so i knew about ezra's penalty but i'm not just going to sit and wait and sit behind him because I know he's got a penalty. There are those guys up in front of him, and um, at the end of the day, want to do the best that I can. The goal is to go and win these races. Um, we were able to make huge improvements this year in 2023 compared to 2022. It's been phenomenal. Super excited for 2024 um, because, again, it's been making, making improvements. It's my program. It's... <laughs> The truck and trailer that my dad and I have had since I was like 13 years old, 12 years old, um, going now. I've been able to make improvements. It's been great to have the support of Tom Wood Power Sports, Visit Indiana, RNG. But we're going to get to something here in a minute that's important. Um, and the commentators find out here shortly. But got to be there and I'm going to do the best that I can we're, I'm doing double the races compared to the other people where I'm doing 30 races a year 10 for stock thousand and then 20 super bike races it's a lot physically it's a lot of stuff going on but if I can go out and show what I'm capable of doing on my program on an S1000 being able to show what an S1000 can really do um, because I'm going up against these M's that are a bit more expensive so for you uh, the track rider, the club racer, things like that, being able to uh, ease the financial burden, so to speak, go and race an S. I mean, we're doing it and having um, 
a great time doing it. So, yeah, it, the race was great. Like I said before, I'm doing a lot more races, so it's a lot more physical toll during the weekend. Um, but if I can go out and do that on my program, on this bike, being able to show off what we can do, then it's being able to have other people come on board, um, different opportunities show up. Uh, you got to be there to be there. Um, and I'm having a, having a great time. So, all right. It's going to come up here in a second. I skipped forward a few bits. All right. So get into turn two. I hadn't, okay, I hadn't passed Ezra going into the turn, but I'll get him on the exit because again, I was able to carry a lot more speed through that section. So I get ahead of him, pass him. I have him pinched towards the outside. So I'm hoping that then I can just basically put a block pass on and make him slow down. But for some reason, despite having the five second pedal, he comes up underneath me. Um, then we just kind of get together. And at that point, there was enough time that had been lost in that moment. I wasn't going to be able to catch Ben Smith and Caleb DeCarroll because I still had to get around Ezra. Ironically, after that skedaddle through the dirt, which it was fine, there was nothing there, but I'd go into the next left-hander and it was okay. Go into the next right-hander and there was still dirt on the tire, on the right-hand side of the tire, so the bike moved around and I hadn't necessarily been expecting that. But all in all, it was, it was a good time. It was a great weekend. Brainerd was cool. I like going up there. The fans are great. One of the nice things is Tomwood Power Sports dealership group that I work with. They have a bunch of different dealerships all across the Midwest, and one of them is in Minnesota. So a bunch of the people from the dealership were there. I was able to ride for the track day on Monday, the day after this, uh, doing stuff with the dealership, riding with Zars. It was a great time. I love going to Brainerd. love going to Minnesota. The mosquitoes sometimes are big enough. They can kind of pick you up off the ground and fly you away. I swear, so they have so, those mosquitoes are crazy up in Minnesota with all those lakes. But it was a great time. It was a great weekend. Uh, doing everything I can to help make the program successful. And it was great. Uh, ironically, after this weekend, so I did four races this weekend, two Superbike, two Stock 1000s. I didn't eat dinner Sunday night um, just because of how things worked out. And then someone else bought me breakfast and then someone else bought me lunch, and I was super grateful for all of that. Um, I didn't ask for it, but it was very much appreciated, um, stretching every dollar that we get coming into the team and being able to have the support of all these amazing people. It's truly fantastic. I love racing bikes, being able to do stuff with Tomwood Power Sports, Visit Indiana, the tourism group for the state, uh, along with RNG and all the other amazing people who help make this team what it is. I can't thank them enough. And I'm super excited for this year. And after this video, now I'm going to try and talk about some of the other races after this, leading up to the final race of the year, going into Brainerd. So going from Brainerd into Pittsburgh, into Circuit of the Americas, and finally into New Jersey. It's one of the things that was really kind of special for me this year, of having the progression and showing what we did um, for a couple of those races. There wasn't Stock 1000 there, it was just the Cup, the Superbike Cup. So... At Pittsburgh and at New Jersey, we did some different things. We ended up winning the championship in the Superbike Cup at Coda, um, which is separate than this, but for me, it's all riding the bike. It's separate from this individual race because this was the Stock 1000 race. But at the end of the day, we're still racing the same bike in these different races, and that's the progression that I see and um, some of the interesting stuff that I've been super excited about and super proud of. I don't... This is a bit of a long video, but I think it's I think it's cool and I'm excited to do more. Anyways, my name is Nolan. Have a good day.